Welcome today to My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell. So excited that you are here today with me for another primitive Christmas style project DIY that you can use uh, really easy, something that you can make really easy to decorate your home for the holiday season without spending very much at all. <laughs> Hop on in here and let me know who is here today. Let me know where you are tuning in from down in the comments below. I always love to see who's here. Also, if you are new, please let us know. We would love to welcome you while you're here today or even on the replay. Uh, hop on in here. You could be watching us uh, streaming over into the Craft on the Clock group or the Vintage and Thrifted uh, Facebook group, or you may even be catching this on the replay on YouTube later as well. No matter where you're tuning in from, welcome today. My name is Tracy Campbell. I'm so excited to be here today. We have... Um, actually probably like three projects in one today i'm bringing you lots of good content today and we are going to get busy today i've got really fun projects something similar than what we've done before but we're giving it a whole new spin for the christmas season hop on in here hello miss amy and if you are hopping on and watching us live on facebook or on the replay you will see a telegram link down below that is where you can sign up for my live notifications and alerts it's just a one-way communication from me to you so that you can receive uh, alerts or notices whenever i'm going live you can jot them down on your calendar save them on your phone set a reminder or whatever but yes that's there for you if you would need it if not you can push the little x and it will disappear <laughs> all right uh, how are you miss vicky and tammy and miss kathy you guys, I have all kinds of things spread out on my craft table today, and you guys are only seeing a small little portion right here, but I promise you, I've got the whole outside, almost the entire perimeter of my table <laughs> stacked up with all kinds of supplies, so I can't wait to show you what we are doing today. We have a fun, uh, so if you watched yesterday, was it yesterday? Or the day before <laughs> a couple of days ago we created something out of nothing uh, which is this cute little uh, what we call it a primitive Christmas can light shadow box <laughs> I think that's what we call it I don't know but we did that a couple of days ago if you missed that we used one of those country time lemonade containers we flipped that container into something totally amazing and uh, uh, this project today is actually going to also coordinate along with that I used a printable set of labels you guys from Etsy a designer on Etsy and um, I'm also going to be using one of her labels again today from that same set to create something, another little accent piece to go in a really cute primitive vignette that we're going to put together at, to, at the end of today's episode. So jam-packed, y'all hopping on in here, right? Hey, Miss Mary and Brenda. All right, we're going to get started. So the first project that we're going to hop to is a... Uh, it's just an old book from the thrift store you guys nothing fancy at all I'm going to jazz this up really quick and simple with a coat of uh, some white uh, craft paint actually am I going to use white craft paint <laughs> uh, no we're going to use some antique white craft paint and we're going to give this covering um, just a, a, a base coat of this paint you guys now this label is this one of the same labels from that set that you saw me use a couple of days ago when we created this little can light. Um, so I've just coffee grunged that and let it dry. We're going to use this on the front of this little book and this is going to be, oh that is not the brush I needed to use for that. <laughs> oh well, that was supposed to be for my coffee grunge in a little bit. That's okay. That's okay. I do have some sponge brushes here that we can use for that if we have to. That's okay, we're gonna go for it. All right, I, all I wanna do is just give this binding uh, a coat of that cream colored paint kind of blended in. And then we're gonna put that label on the front and we're gonna let that dry up. Then we're gonna go to a Christmas pantry cake, you guys. You all have seen me make the pantry tarts before uh, and they were super cute and so easy to do. But today we're doing a pantry cake and we're decorating it up for Christmas. I'm going to show you how to put some faux icing and really dress it up. And then we're going to create a little vignette that would be darling on a coffee bar, um, on a buffet, or even in a little hutch area, something like that, or a side table. Uh, something really really cute you could even you could even put it in a little nook in your kitchen you all have probably seen my little cozy corner in my kitchen on a few of my cooking episodes um, we have done I've showed you actually it was my last cooking episode that we did 
what did we make that day? I don't even remember. Um, but I showed you all my little cozy corner. Oh, we made pumpkin pies. We made the real deal pumpkin pies. <laughs> and I showed you all my little cozy nook that I have. And um, yeah, that's, that's where I like to decorate. And that would be a great idea to do something like this in. All right, so we're drying that up real quick. It won't take long because it's just a light coat. Uh, actually, before that dries, let's sprinkle it, shall we? Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. We could sprinkle it with a little bit of instant coffee, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of my, that's not been opened, a little bit of my cinnamon here. And that's probably a little more than I anticipated, but that's okay. <laughs> we love cinnamon around here. All right. And you know what? I know that probably went on a little heavy and even though that paint's not dry, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a real flash spray of this Mod Podge real quick. All right. Woohoo. We're gonna let that dry really quick super quick well that is drying I have my little label ready we're gonna whip this one out real quick and then we're gonna move right on to our little pantry cake this backside is not dry all right I'm gonna get my um, Mod Podge ready I'm gonna put just a real thin coat of this on just for uh, right now and then uh, later I will come back over and give it a little bit better of a coating but uh, I want you guys to be able to see this all put together today and I don't want you to be able to have to look over the Mod Podge that hasn't dried if I put it on too thick it will be too white and creamy looking so and I'm going right over that cinnamon that spray it, it will hold it in place but that'll hold it even better all right, a light coat, and then we're gonna put that label right on top. This is one of the labels from the set that I showed you a couple of days ago when we did our Christmas can light. If you wanna miss that, oh, that was a good one, really good one. You'll want to go back and watch that. Um, and I have it sitting right back here. It's a little shadow box and um, it was the neatest project, you guys. The neatest project. And we used grocery trash to flip it into something amazing. And um, hello, Miss Sue from Living a Heartful Life. How are you, sweet friend? Um, this label has been coffee crunched and um, it has some wrinkles in it. I welcome the wrinkles. Um, because to me that makes it look like a very worn and tattered book and I want it to sit with my little vignette so um, I'm just kind of going under these little rippled edges here to make sure that it sticks down really good especially around the edges and this is going to be a cute little addition to our little set and not only that, it's gonna coordinate with our Christmas can light, and it's gonna coordinate with lots of other little items that we're putting together. So I think I need a little bit more. Lord, I didn't put enough under there, obviously, because it's not wanting to lay down real good. I may have soaked right into that book. Ah. <laughs> there. All right, I'm just gonna rub it down. I probably shouldn't be using my fingers because my fingers start sticking. It might pull it up. Okay. Now I am going to fold down those little corners, those little edge pieces that hang off the edge. I'm just going to wrap them around the corner, around the edge of the book. Okay. And I'm, like I said, I'm okay with those wrinkles because to me that makes it look like a good old book. All right. And then. I'm going to take our, I have a new, back, new fresh batch of coffee grunge sitting right here in front of me, you guys. <laughs> How convenient. Hey, Miss Holly. Let's see. Uh, hi, just get on. What are we doing? Okay, Rose, we are creating like two or three projects in one today. The first one is a real quick and easy. Oh, my gracious. 
the lid on my jar. <laughs> um, the first one is a real easy, just a uh, repurpose an old book with uh, one of the labels that we used a couple of days ago uh, from a set that we used uh, a couple of days ago uh, on when we made the can light okay now I'm taking my coffee grunge and I'm going over I made this batch of coffee grunge a little weaker <laughs> I um, put a little more water in it this time um, to just to see because I was using a little bit different brand of vanilla and um, I'm going to be using it in a second in this pantry cake that we're getting ready to do. A Christmas pantry cake. All right, I'm dripping this all over, if that's okay. I am just grunging up this book. I'm going to let this book soak this up, you guys. How many of you have tried the coffee grunge on a book? <laughs> we're doing it today. We're letting it soak right in, you guys. We're going to let it soak into those pages. Yes, we are. And is it going to warp the book a little bit? Yes, it is. But that is okay because that's going to make it look so good. So look on the inside of the back cover. I'm taking it and I'm going all in there. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go on every page. No, I'm not. But I am going to go in the back and front covers. And that is going to soak into those pages and this is going to give you a nice subtle smell close to wherever you choose to display it okay now I'm taking that and I'm just kind of squeezing that out of my brush and getting it all into those pages and then what's going to be so cool about it is when you open the pages you'll see a little bit of the discoloration around the edges okay now you will want this to dry for a good little bit okay we're going to set this off to the side i'm going to clean off my table right here because we have made a mess and then we're going to get busy on our christmas pantry cake that was a quick and easy little um accent piece that we're, we just did we're going to let that dry and then hopefully by the time we get done and get ready to create our little vignette that will be all dry okay well, that was messy. I should have brought my um, paper to the table today. I didn't do that. All right, this has, still has paint on it, which I don't think we're gonna need, but actually we will need it. All right, now for this next project, I am, I'm gonna bring this like cookie sheet right up here, just to kind of help protect my surface a little bit. On the top of my Facebook page, you guys, I have several things that are pinned up there in what Facebook labels as the featured section. And in that featured section, you will find my coffee grunge recipe. You will find a video that shows you how to find all of my um, older videos, like my video collections and things like that. And then there's also a post up there that has my recipe for my pantry tarts okay faux pantry tarts they're kind of like um the primitive take on fake bakes if you will now if you are a newbie around here you probably missed some of my fake bakes <laughs> we make uh we've made faux let me show you this if you're new we've made the faux bread loaves okay we have made let me grab this um some little mini uh pantry tarts all right and then we have we'll see what else oh we did uh faux pancakes <laughs> and faux biscuits so we've got lots of things that we can kind of use all together and mix and and match to make some really cute vignettes okay for especially for the holidays now this pantry cake today is very similar to this one that we created let me show you this Remember this one, I showed you this when we did the mini um, pantry tarts, okay? This is just a cast iron uh, skillet from the Dollar General. It's a little mini cast iron skillet. I coffee grunged it. I put the coffee grunge all over it and it smells amazing. But not only that, this little pantry tart here has cinnamon and everything else on it, which makes it smell amazing. And then we have some cinnamon scented, um, actually I think these are cinnamon apple scented rose hips sprinkled around this. And usually I set this on top of a vintage little kitchen scale and put it in my little cozy corner in my kitchen, okay? 
I want to show you how to do a Christmas version of one of these. It's going to be similar but slightly different, okay? And I was so excited because I found um, a vintage Jello mold, <laughs> which I've been looking for one of these forever and just haven't been able to find it. Oh, I about panicked for a second. So I'm going to whip this together, show you how I do this, talk you through the, the oven process, and then I already have one that's already been pre-made. We're going to use it in a little vignette, okay? So this one, if you want the recipe, I have just a basic uh, general recipe pinned, like I said, at the top of my Facebook page. It'll say pantry tart um, recipe, okay? This one, I'm going to change it up just a slight bit, and I'll... I'll tell you why and how we're going to do that. Okay, so we're going to start with the mixing bowl first. This is what we need first. We don't need any pit berries just yet. <laughs> all right. Oh, I'm throwing stuff. Let me get all these little dishes. I just kind of carried all of this over here at one time. Now, the recipe calls for two cups of flour. Okay, this is all easy peasy ingredients that you probably already have in your pantry. They're just staple pantry items, okay? Uh, two cups of flour. And this recipe will make, uh, this. I would call this like a medium. I don't know what the diameter of this, probably like, a, it's probably like a seven inch uh, diameter, uh, like jello mold. And it's probably about three or four inches deep. Okay, and then I have some little mini ones. It makes one of these and one of these. So you can get kind of, you kind of get an idea of how much one batch will make you. Okay, all right. Now it calls for one cup of water. Let me zip this up so I can see me tossing that everywhere. Hello, Miss Mary Ann. Hey, Mary Lou, how are you? I'm gonna cross this out so I can see you guys in the comments. Hello, hello, Miss Christine. Hey, Jennifer, hey, Cynthia. Glad y'all are on here today. All right, my hands are a mess. Now, my recipe calls for a cup of water. Well, guess what? I'm not using water. I'm going to use coffee grunge. <laughs> I'm using the coffee grunge um, because the recipe all also calls for used coffee grounds, which I don't have used coffee grounds, you guys. So I'm using the coffee grunge. Now, just let me show you this because I get this question a lot. My coffee grunge is slimy. Is something wrong with it? Has it gone bad? What did I do wrong? <laughs> well, a lot of times it depends on the type of vanilla you use. If it's slimy, it's totally okay because that is actually one of the key features of that, this mixture is that it helps it stick and adhere to whatever surface you apply it to. So look at this. I just made this batch. Do you see how, how goopy and slimy it is on my sponge brush? <laughs> Yeah, that would totally freak somebody out probably, right? That's okay. Just take it and scrape it off. That is the cinnamon and the vanilla that have kind of combined and they kind of create that little gelatin-like um, mixture, okay? Uh, so what I would do if it's really, really bad, usually when you get it out of the fridge is when it's the worst. But, let's see, where'd my lid go? Um, when I get it out of the, you have to store it in the fridge when you're not using it. But when I get it out of the fridge, I shake it up, okay? And then I take the lid off and pop it in my microwave to heat it up, okay? You want it warm when you get ready to use it. Uh, so give it a good shake. Now, when you get it out of the microwave, put the lid back on and shake it up good. And that will kind of help. Uh, help you kind of work against that slimy texture, okay? It will get slimy again once it settles, you know, sits for a little bit because mine is still hot, but it's still, once it settles, if you're not kind of constantly moving the solution around, it does kind of want to settle back down to the bottom. So just give it a good shake, okay? All right. So it calls for a cup of water. I'm not using a cup of water. I'm going to use a cup of coffee grinch. All right. Pouring it right on in there. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Now, this is not edible. However, it will smell incredibly edible. Um, uh, okay. It smells so good. Now, you need a cup of salt. The cheap each salt will work. Any kind of cheap salt. Just get the cheapest that you can find. Don't use your fancy sea salt or 
Himalayan salt. <laughs> you need a whole cup, which is quite a bit. I think it'll be like half of one of these. What? Uh, this is a 10 ounce container. That's a lot of salt, but this is sort of like a salt dough. Um, and it will smell amazing once you get it all put together. Oh my gosh. I have one that's already been made up and it's fresh. And when they're freshly made, oh, they can smell up. It, it just, it's not a smell that knocks you down. It's a smell that will catch you by surprise. I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> so I love using the, I love using these things for that reason too. Okay, I got quite a bit of salt left in my cup. I'm just gonna kind of scrape some of that out. Now, the next thing we're gonna add, some cloves, some ground cloves. Okay, there we go. Where'd the cloves go? Where'd the cloves go? That's cinnamon, that's cinnamon. Um, I must've carried my clove off somewhere. Um, I only have four containers of cinnamon on my table. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, Gracie, I think I need you for a second. I don't know where it went to. I really, literally just had it. Oh, hang on. Nope, that's cinnamon too. Okay, make that five containers of cinnamon. I must have grabbed one of these thinking it was my cloves. Um, is there a container, a spice container over there on the counter that's ground cloves? Hmm. I don't know where it went. Okay, but anyway, you're gonna use two tablespoons of ground clove and then three tablespoons of ground cinnamon, which we already have quite a bit of cinnamon in that coffee grunge, so I'm not gonna add quite as much. It's probably like, <laughs> I was gonna say, it's probably right here under my nose. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, I would lose my head if it wasn't attached, you guys. All right, two tablespoons of this. I was gonna say I can make it without it, but it won't smell. It won't smell as amazing. <laughs> Making sure I was adding the right thing. I just did a double take there. Okay. Uh, hey, Miss Jennifer, just got here. Oh my goodness, girl! I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. This cinnamon hasn't been opened yet. Let me toss that to the side. <laughs> uh, I don't think this one's been opened. Oh my gosh. I need to just get like one big like shaker and use that. There, this one's the one I need. And you want three tablespoons of cinnamon, right? Yes, but I'm not gonna add three because our coffee grinch has quite a bit in it already. So I'm probably only gonna do two. All right, so I modified that recipe slightly, but not a lot. So if you want the original recipe, you can follow what I have there on, pinned at the top of my Facebook page, okay? That's all you have in there. I'm making sure that's right. Two cups of flour, a cup of water, or a cup of coffee grunge. Uh, four tablespoons of, okay, if you don't use the coffee grunge, you can use four tablespoons of used coffee grounds, okay? Just regular coffee grounds if you would want to do that. I, I don't have regular coffee grounds, so I just substituted my coffee grunge as well. Um, two tablespoons of ground cloves, three tablespoons of ground cinnamon, and yeah, we're gonna mix it together. Now, if you mix this together, oh, I need to take my rings off. Um, and I forgot to, I forgot a large spoon. Rats. Let's just use this one for a minute. Um, if you mix this together and you think uh, it's not quite dark enough, you can put some instant coffee uh, crystals in it and that will help darken it up. But since we have that coffee grunge in here, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good color. Now, I will show you what mine looked, looks like. I've already have one of these made up and um, it's been drying for the last couple of days. So I'll give you a peek at what that looks like. Um, and so you can do, you know, do a judge for yourself. And like I said, different cinnamons and different vanillas can all be different colors. And so there can be a little bit of variation, even if you follow the recipe exactly. Um, you know, those sometimes can have a little bit of varied darkness to them so you'll just have to mix it together and get a good look at what it looks like and if it's not dark enough for you then um add that instant coffee all right now we're getting it's going to take a little bit to kind of get it all incorporated together so be patient um but it will take a little bit for all that dry flour and dry salt 
to absorb that mixture, that water, or the coffee grounds rather, in this case. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just kind of rotating and just spinning it around as I go, and I'm probably gonna dig my hands in here um, in a second. I do have, yes, I do have wet wipes here for my hands. <laughs> So if you get this all mixed together and you think it's not it's not clumping together like you think it should, you want, you, it will, will start to form a little bit of a dough ball, sort of. Um, but if it doesn't start to do that after you're mixing it really good, hey, hey, is it Cynthia? I'm missing, oh my comments, stop scrolling, rats. <laughs> oh my gracious, y'all been chatting it up. Uh, hey, Miss Tracy from Country Charm by Tracy. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. Miss Anna from J&A Woodcrafts. How are you? Marsha, we're making a primitive Christmas pantry cake. That's what we're doing. A faux pantry cake. Uh, we've, also, we've already done one project, and I'll show you that in a second. And then we're going to put these projects together and create a really cute um, little vignette that I think you'll really like. Um, using some of the, the items that we've created today. Okay, now mine is still a little, let me show you, see it, mine's still kind of a little clumpy. Um, it crumbly is what I should say. So I need to add a little bit more moisture. So I'm gonna add a little bit more coffee grunge to it. Ah, maybe. <laughs> My hands are slimy, not slimy, but they uh, have the grit the salt grit to them from mixing this up. All right, that will help pull together the last little bit of that mixture together. And you'll see your bowl will start to clean itself. <laughs> Once you roll the dough around and it, it has enough moisture to it, it will clean the bowl for you. you and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a minute. All right, my bowl kind of has a deep little edge around the bottom so I'm kind of helping it along here some of that salt and flour wants to get stuck down in there all right so you're just gonna roll it around oh yes this is perfect okay you'll start to see that it starts to just stick together to itself and makes a nice dough ball okay all right there we go almost like a cheese ball Smells so good. <laughs> smells so good. Hello, Miss Mary. Hello. How much? How are you, Miss Tina? One day I'm gonna try this. Oh, it's so easy. It's so easy. And I tell you, if you don't like, I mean, this is kind of like the best way to like keep yourself on a diet, but still enjoy like the holiday smells of baking. <laughs> Use this. Oh my gosh, you guys. All right, there we go. That's easy peasy, right? Now let me kind of just do this with my hands. And I'm not even going to mess with cleaning them completely off yet. All right, let's set this over here. Now, whatever pan you decide to use, you need to do a little bit of spray oil, cooking oil, cooking oil spray or whatever inside the um, pan because that will help it release. All right. There we go. Easy, right? So then what you're going to do... <clears throat> This is a pretty deep pan, okay? So I don't wanna fill this entire pan and make it completely a solid cake because it will take forever and ever and ever and ever <laughs> to dry. And more than likely, it will start to mold before it ever completely dries all the way through, okay? So we are going to press it down and make a shell, if you will, okay? Press it in there and make a shell. And then the the um, inside part of it will be hollow, if you kind of catch what I'm saying. So I'm pressing it in. <clears throat> could you use an electric mixer with a dough? Oh, absolutely, Christine. Yeah, I'm sure you probably could. I mean, this is, I mean, this is basically no different than a cookie dough. Yeah, the same, same texture and consistency as a, as a cookie dough. Um, I have one of my, my hair. I'm shedding. <laughs> I don't want that in my dough. All right, so I'm taking it, and I'm just taking my fingers straight down in, and I'm pressing it up. You can see how I'm pressing that up against the inside of my pan. See how I'm doing that? 
because this pen has some beautiful grooves and and that what's that's what makes the design of this little pan this mold um so pretty for this project <clears throat> are the swirls see the swirls on that so i want to press that dough really good down into those swirls those indentions okay but I want to make sure that I'm thinning the dough as I go. I don't want to leave it super, super thick because it will not dry very well, okay? Now, <clears throat> even if you make this the correct thinness rather <laughs> than thickness, um, it will still take several days to dry. So don't feel like you've done something wrong if it takes you know what you feel like takes forever to dry okay it can also depend on the humidity of your environment of course um, and the temperature so um, you do want to let make sure that it's getting good airflow um, and just let it sit and do its thing for a little bit but however you do once I put this in here I do put it in a low temp oven uh, like 175 and some ovens don't even go that low I think my oven only goes to like 200 and then has a warm setting so what I typically do is I like to put it on the warm setting which I, I don't even know what temperature that technically is it's probably like 150 um, so I'll put it in the oven for about an hour um, sometimes an hour and a half but now here's the thing if your oven can go really low you can probably get away with longer I can't because mine starts to burn uh, if you have some that burn uh, I'll show you how to disguise them they're not I mean they're they're still salvageable um, but you want to try to avoid that if you can so what I do is I put it on on my warm setting which has to be like 150 or 175 degrees uh, for about an hour and a half and then I take them out I let it sit in the pan for a few hours on the you know on the on, a, uh, on the counter and then um, after a few more hours I'll kind of take it out I'll just pop it over and the and the shell will fall out and I kind of just kind of get a feel for how spongy it might still feel um, and I can kind of tell if it's you know how damp it still is um, and if it still has quite a bit of give to it I put it back in the pan and I leave it on the counter okay if I think it has just minimal squish to it <laughs> you like those scientific terms <laughs> um, then I'll take it out of the pan so that it can continue and finish to dry without being in the pan okay it will dry uh, you know more evenly without it being in the pan after it's out of the oven um, so that's that's how I do it and um, really you just kind of have to watch it and like I said I made one on Monday morning and uh, mine still has a little bit of, of squish to it it's not completely cured yet it will it will take several days you guys now i think i've got the completely the inside of this um mashed around and made a little shell and let me give you a close-up i probably have mine a little too thick around the sides so i'm just taking my fingers and i'm moving that extra up around the inside of my bunt okay uh, oh my goodness thank you hey miss Cheryl hey Stephanie um, so I'm gonna put just a little bit around this inside cone okay I want to make sure that it's thin and dries that's gonna help it dry better <laughs> without it molding you don't want a moldy pantry cake <laughs> nobody's gonna want that for Christmas right <laughs> all right this is just a primitive style fake bake, you guys. That's really what it is. All right, so I'm taking that. Let me show you what we have. So do you see it's hollow in the center, okay? Now, what you can do, if you want the bottom of your pantry cake to be completely solid, what you can do is take some aluminum foil, roll it up, and make a ring to go down inside of your hollow area then you can take more of your dough and spread it across the top if you want a completely solid bottom it's not going to show so it's not necessary it's completely a personal preference okay all right so what i'm going to do now do you see kind of the unevenness that i have going on around here so what i'm going to do is take my finger and i'm just going to make sure that i'm going around that edge 
that's going to help me make sure that the bottom of this is even when it's finished okay uh, this dough will rise slightly it doesn't get extremely poofy but it will rise a little bit um, and probably the longer you leave it in the oven the more it will rise but I left mine in about an hour and a half and I'll show you um, I follow the same exact process um, on Monday when I did a little um, sample all right there you go that's what you're gonna put in the oven at 175 or 150 for an hour and a half or so okay now now I have a little bit of dough left over so if you have some little mini bunt pans this would be perfect you can put it in a baggie store it in your fridge and you can make another batch and add to it and you can create several of these okay um, it's totally up to you all right so that's what you put in the oven let's set that over here <clears throat> Now let's fast forward <laughs> to what we have going on over here with this one. Okay, so, uh oh, I'm gonna end up dropping this. So this is the one that we put together on Monday. Um, I left mine in the oven and you can see it started to scorch and burn a little bit. See right in there? So I'm gonna cover mine with some cinnamon and coffee grunge and that will disguise that. But as you see in the bottom, it's hollow. So it helps it to be lighter weight and it also helps it to dry faster and more evenly. Now, I can take my fingers right in here and do a little squish test and it does still have a little bit of gift to it. Um, so you wanna make sure that you let yours completely cure. Um, it might take a week. It might take a little bit longer than a week. Uh, but you want to let it set up real good before you kind of start to add anything extra to it. Okay, I'm kind of rushing this part of the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a super, 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 actually I can probably still use my sponge brush that was saturated in that coffee grunge a second ago. I'm going to take my coffee grunge and I'm just going to coat it. Now keep in mind that you're adding moisture back to this. So you need to make sure that you leave this in a well ventilated area so that air can um, circulate around it because we need it to dry we don't need it to sit and just stay wet because that will um, entice mold to, to grow and we don't want to do that so you can keep a little mini fan on it if you want um, to kind of speed it along but um, mine has just been air drying and right now it's not quite so humid in you know here in kentucky right now um, and we don't even have the heat on but i'll just kind of keep a fan circulating the air in the house and that's that's all it, it's been doing and it's worked out perfect so then i'm going to take oh this doesn't have a little sprinkler on it then i'm going to take my cinnamon and i'm going to sprinkle cinnamon over top of that grunge and I know it kind of seems like we're over cinnamon -ing 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 it. <laughs> How do you like, try to say that, over cinnamon -ing -ing it. <laughs> um, But we're going to just sprinkle it. Oh, sprinkle, sprinkle, not dump, but sprinkle <laughs> over top that. Okay, so here's what we kind of got right now. Just, we're dusting it. That's what we're doing. If you wanted to, you could take um, some baby powder and do this and have a, like a powdered sugar look okay uh, and that might be what I do to my next one just to kind of see what it looks like I've never tried that um, I was gonna sprinkle my clove on there a little bit let's sorry threw it over <laughs> threw it overboard I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of that on there too and um, that will just let that sit and let it kind of soak into that grunge okay now we don't have time to let it sit <laughs> so i'm going to give it a little bit of a spray and you'll see that that kind of it makes it stick to it a little bit and then i'm going to kind of dry it all right now i want to make some little icing uh, a little bit of icing to go on the top and by golly, I forgot my little mixing bowl. I could use, oh, I might could use one of these, maybe. Sorry, my necklace keeps getting on my microphone, I think. All right, 
Um, I'm going to mix together a little bit of Mod Podge and some white paint. Oh, that's got a goopy strand in there. That Mod Podge will do that to you. <laughs> All right, a little bit of Mod Podge, probably a half and half consistency will be good. Now, the Mod Podge will kind of help make your paint a little runnier, but yet it will also kind of help it stick and clump. Um, where'd my wipes go? We got to speed this along here. Um, what am I looking for? Caulk. You might want to add a little bit of caulk to it. And I don't know if I can get any of this out. We'll see. Yeah, there you go. That will help the clumping. All right, and then a little bit of the paint. I don't know if I want to go with straight white. Um, looks like I'm going to have to because I don't have very much of that antique white. So let's put in a little bit of white paint. Now that Mod Podge is white, so that's kind of deceiving because it'll dry clear. Um, I wish I had a little mixing. You know what? I'm going to use a pencil. <laughs> when you're a desperate, desperate time call for desperate measures, <laughs> going to mix that together and then we're going to drizzle it over top. You can put it in a little baggie, cut the corner. All right, where's that little baggie go? All right, I think that's good. Oh, we've got three minutes. I want to show you the little one yet. Oh, my gracious. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. All right, so I'm just going to put it in a little baggie and cut the corner, okay? And I'm going to drizzle it around the top of my pantry cake and let it drizzle and do its thing. I'm just getting the air out of the bag right now. Um, drizzle it around the top. Okay, and let me show you how I'm going to embellish it. I'm going to put a little bit of greenery and a little bit of berries in the top, or I can just wrap it with cheesecloth like we've done this one. Wrap it in some cheesecloth, put some little red Christmas berries at the top. Pit berries would look darling, okay? That's what I'm Time, it's time. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> we got two minutes. Let's whip this together. Let me spread this over. So this one, we're going to slide this over to the side. But let me show you how I'm going to put this together in a little bit yet. Real quick, I have several little things I want to show you. A coffee mug. You know the little sacks that we made uh, last week? Yes. Yes, we did. And I found this wood cutting board at Hobby Lobby this week on clearance. It's in their fall section for like five bucks you guys it was originally like 50 or 60 bucks it is heavy duty so i'm thinking this would look so cute on a buffet i've put a little uh, buffalo plaid um or tea towel there and i have a little coffee st grunged doily i'm putting a little coffee mug there i'm putting our little print of we did these little grain sacks on our home printer tucking that right there i've got the grungy book that's a little it says mrs claus's coffee shop I'm going to tuck that in there too. Now, where did that little, we'll use this little pantry cake for right now since our other one is drying. Uh, I'm going to put that right here and I have some little mini um, little pantry tarts that I want to kind of tuck in there too. You can totally sprinkle these with some diamond dust and glitter them up. You can make it as dressy or simple as you want, but I always like to add a little bit of sparkle. So what I've done I'm going to tuck this down here, I think, actually. I've got an old grater, and I have put a string of Christmas lights, some greenery, and a little rag bow there. I'm going to put that right there, and let's plug this in real quick. Our next presenter is going to be live in one minute over in the Craft from the Clock group, you guys. I want you to check it out. Plug that in, and how cute is that little display right there. How cute would that look on a buffet, you guys? How cute! <laughs> Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. We whew, we wrapped it all in. I'm going to icing our little pantry cake over here. I'll take a photo 
and show that in my Facebook stories for you guys to see. I don't know where my timer is. It's buried. <laughs> It's buried. Anyway, I will see you guys again soon. If you are coming to Metropolis to the Christmas Barn Trail, I will be meeting you Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at the Custom Southern Co. Barn. <laughs> All right, I'll see, I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.